Okay, so. Okay. So yesterday we have came along so long. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is. Do we have enough people? Okay. Okay. So here, yesterday, yesterday took the block time. Um, let's do LMB. Um, Okay, so yesterday there was uh, one information. Uh, oh, let me quit. When we did uh, when we did the file system, when we did the file system here yesterday, right? So. Okay. Yesterday, the we were looking at the block size four zero nine six, right? So where is block size four zero nine six? Okay, right here. Okay, block size four zero nine six. So four zero four zero nine six is actually a byte. It uh, it turns out to be four K. 10 kilobyte file. 4 kilobyte file is nothing. Okay, so let me show you how this works here. Okay, so on the disk here, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, I need to explain this before we move forward. Okay, and uh, let me highlight this. Let me resize this. And then let me do this. Or, okay, and. Okay, so what the block size is. So 
if we have a file, if we create a file, right, search file 1, we created a file. So if that file is a 1 kilobyte, so how much is the disk space being used? It should, be, it should be very little. Yeah, it will be exactly. It will tell you what is the size of the file here. But the physical physical location of the size, since this is set to 4K, but the physical physical size of the location, I mean, physical, physical size of the hard drive, it will use 4 kilobytes. Because the minimum smallest block size it's using is is 4K. So now, what is what is the file size is 2K? How much is going to use? Same as 4K. Exactly. Very good. Now we are at 6K. So how much is going to use now? Same. No, it's going to use 8. Because four kilobytes is used up, another two it needs a more space, right? Got it. Yeah. Eight kilobytes. So it's going to increase in the increment of. It's going to increase the increment of four. Four kilobytes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Because these are four boxes. So let's see here. Um, Okay, so we have this file four boxes here, right? So if this is this is one kilobyte file, it's going to use all the four boxes. Okay. Okay, give me, give me, hold, hold on guys, give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let me do this. Mm -hmm. uh, merge size. So this is a four kilobyte block. Okay, it's four kilobytes. So if it's using one kilobyte. It is still using the entire four blocks, okay? Still using entire four blocks. So if it's two kilobytes, if it's four kilobytes, then it's using four kilobytes. So nothing is getting wasted here. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So it's using using entire four kilobytes. So nothing is getting wasted here. Now, if it's six kilobytes, you need you need uh, you need another four four uh, four kilobytes here. So, if six kilobytes, we need eight kilobytes of disk space. Okay, so this is how it works. It will use eight kilobytes of disk. Okay, so, okay, does it make sense or uh, it makes no sense? Let me know before I move forward. So, if it's 8 kilobytes, then it's going to use 8 kilobytes of this space. So, I mean, hope you're getting out, getting the concept here. Okay. So it's okay with me. I don't know about others, but it's okay with me. Okay. The thing that I got from here is that anytime you need more space, 
it will always assign a block of 4K even if you need a few bytes. Yeah, so so normally I have not seen people playing around with this. You know, the hard drives are dead cheap these days. Not the one big corporation use. I've seen uh, some uh, Hitachi, with, uh, Hitachi hard drives. They cost uh, $1,000 each or more than that. Or one terabyte or two terabytes. So, so you know, that's how it goes though. Big corporations, they have big pockets, so they really don't care. So, uh are those special kind of hard drives that they use because uh, as yeah, I think they, they are highly encrypted uh, hard drives here so let's see if I could find something usually those are EMCs uh, Okay, the search is bringing up is the consumer hard drives here and the ones used by uh, the big corporations. It's not even showing up in the results here. Usually, that the sale is done through uh, you know the agent and all that. So. But believe me, those are some really expensive hard drives and they are very good, reliable. So. But you'll be working on those and running your commands here. You will be getting paid for your commands, the knowledge of the commands of things work. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay. Okay, so we created the file system MKEXT4. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's see the size of how this EXT4 here works. Okay, so. So I have a file system here, and then this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, okay? So in ext4, ext4, 
txt4 file system a single file like if you if you for example if you have a word document the single file the size of a single file for ext4 could be 16 terabytes okay and then the same thing for red hat 7 will be 16 terabytes a single file for example if you have a word document the word document i'm creating the one size of one single file could be 16 terabytes. That's a very big size. Okay. And then ext4, ext3. Okay, let's, uh, we have to, I have to check uh, Google here. ext3. But uh, as we read yesterday, we learned this that we can create a file system ext4 what is that stand for and what is the what are the other file systems and That's why what it I'm doing here. so the the only the only thing you have to worry about is in ext4 file system the size of a single file is 16 16 terabytes okay right here uh, got, got it and you uh, made single largest file. Yeah. So if you create, I'm creating a word document here, right? One size of one single file you could handle is up to 16 terabytes. So you, you think uh, this is not possible, but there are some databases that are using a one single file into into a lot of uh, one single file is huge. So let's see the size of this file here. Uh, what is it I'm saving here? Okay, the size of this file is uh, man, can I see that? 12,000 KB, that means okay, 12 MB. So just imagine if it's 12 GB and 16 terabytes, it's a huge file. It's going into the size into billions. Okay. <coughs> the EXT, uh, let's see if uh, they have some table here. It stands for Extended File System. It was introduced and does not have generally. Okay. So, so the maximum for ext4 is 16, ext3, and ext2. Okay, so the maximum for both of these two terabytes and overall file system size can be 32 terabytes, 32 terabytes, and 1 EB byte. Okay. I got Okay, so uh, how much was it? One exabyte. Is it the hard disk or the file system? The file system. I mean, the file. Did you get the concept of the file system in the where the single file is? Uh, and then this the larger size of the file system in the yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So this one is with two terabytes. And this one is two terabytes. And then the maximum is uh, 32 terabytes. Let me go back and check it here. Maximum, maximum individual file can be 16 gigabytes. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Maximum is 2 terabytes. Yeah. Maximum. Okay. I'm just leaving it as a maximum of 2 terabytes. Okay. And overall file system is going to be 32. Okay. I'm good. So, ext2 is going to be same. So, what, what is the name of the for from 16 gigabytes to 2 terabytes? Uh, the standard one is 32 terabytes. Starting from 16 gigabytes, that means there can be any file less than 16 gigabytes then? This is the maximum. This is the maximum size. No, I'm, I'm looking at it. Gigabyte, if you want to keep the size of the file keep growing, the maximum it could grow is the 16 terabytes. 16 in Red Hat 6, the size of a single file I'm saying, single file. If you create a file name, Sahi, the maximum size it could go into the ext4 file system is 16 terabytes. Now I'm talking about the search that you did. On that it says for the 2 and 3 from 16 gigabyte. What is the word from mean? From 16 gigabyte to 2 terabyte. What does that mean? 16 gigabyte. The individual file size can be from 16. Yeah, I mean, they are misrepresenting here. It could be one kilobyte to up to six, two terabytes. Okay, that's some kind of experience. Thank you. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, it's, it's a little confusing here, but I, I got the concept here. So, so the maximum size of single file could be 16 terabytes. In a 7 also 16 terabytes. Maximum file size. Maximum, uh, Maximum file system size could be maximum size here, not the hard drive here. Maximum size of file system. Maximum size of file system is one EB byte. So one EB byte is I will leave it up to you guys. How much is one EB byte? You can figure that out and let me know. So this one EB is the uh, uh, which one is uh, in the RSL 7 or? No, yeah, both. 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 Most corporations are still running on 7.5, and uh, they go up to 7.9, and then they switch to 8. So uh, I just I just Google, and Google says one million terabyte is equal to one exabyte. Okay. So I was thinking 1,000. Now it says one million here. Huh? So 1,000 terabytes is one terabyte, and one terabyte is. Uh, 1,000 terabytes is 1 exabyte, I think. So this, this would be using in supercomputers. By the way, supercomputers are running on Linux. Windows can't handle it, okay? Believe me. 2 terabytes here. 2 terabytes here. And then 32. 32 terabytes here, right? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah, 32, okay. All right. I'm going to throw in the monkey wrench here. And there is XFS file system too. Okay. And how much is the XFS file system is using? So the file, single file, it could handle is and the terabytes. This is crazy. This is 100 terabytes, okay? And 
where head seven could handle a single file, one single database file could be 500 terabytes. And you sound this, you think this is crazy here, but I'll tell you who is using this, okay? Just imagine NASA. NASA is collecting all the data in the space, right? And they be, they will be using all this file system here. They, they for NASA would be a practical uh, example that they're using the files here, 500 terabytes here, okay? For each file when they are doing the space exploration. Don't put too much time on this here, just uh, what I'm creating is that's good enough for now. Okay, uh, let's see here. EXT3, EXT4, EXT, XFS. But believe me, when they're writing on the disk, they're using zeros. And one, zero and then one, so no matter what file system it is. Okay, there is DFS also, so let's worry about XFS for now. The 64 file still has a few disadvantages. Okay, so XFS is not always the way to next generation. Uh, EXT4 handles less file size, for example, maximum supported file size is given for the EXFS. Okay, um, the size is, the maximum file system size is 8 exabytes minus 1 byte to, but the limitation imposed by host optimization. Uh, XFS file system is not, I mean, uh, I've seen in my work environment they're using it, but not as much as EXT4. Okay, but I can hold on, I want to get to the bottom of this. Allocation, stride, direct IO. Okay. Um, XFS. The file size could be 100 terabytes, 100 terabytes, uh, 500 terabytes. Maximum file system is here. XFS is 500 terabytes. Uh, 
maximum file size is 500 terabytes. And uh, I see brother, at the bottom it says that the wide, not the terabyte. If you look at the bottom of the page, they have the giant call. TIB which is terabyte. Yeah, terabyte. That's not terabyte, it would be some different, 2 to the power 40. Yeah, uh, so my bad here, terabyte. So this is all the terabytes here. These are terabytes. So these are even more bigger size inside here. Uh, I'll leave this the terabytes here, but the size will be EB, EB byte. And then 500, and then what is the size is going to be? Uh, 500 EB byte is 16, 16 EB byte, okay? So one EV byte and 16 EV byte is, is kind of a big difference here, okay? So let me just move this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down. Oops, where did it go? Okay, now it makes sense here. So the, there is some disadvantage for the XFS here. Um, so the so you can definitely see the difference between the, the file system with ext3, ext2, and then the size here for single file system is ext4, and then we also have XFS here, and it's kind of crazy size is going up to. Okay. Okay. But we are going to deal with the EXT4 and EXT XFS. EXT4 and XFS here. Most of the time we are going to deal with EXT4. Okay? We will deal, uh, if it's a data, database uh, box, then we are going to deal with the. Is it okay if I use the file system here or should I move it upstairs, up here, somewhere here? No, I'll just leave it here. It's okay if you leave it here, brother. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Let's move forward. Okay. So let me clear this. So if I do L S B L K. So we have a SD1 and the size is 8 gigabytes. But how are, how are we going to use this? The, the, we did our own, we did our part here, but how are we going to use it? So it's not ready to use here, so we have to mount it. If you do PFF and H, the SD1 is showing, but the SD2, uh, SD, SD, B is not showing in here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to make a directory here. So let me clear this. CD clear. And I'm going to do this MKDIR. And I'm going to make this into the, into the directory, root directory. <coughs> And then I'm going to make it Saeed. Okay, and if I do ls, and the root uh, the directory Saeed is there, okay? If I go into slash Saeed, <coughs> I do ls, nothing is in there. If I do dff and h, there is nothing there. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna we're gonna tell the the newly created directory to start using the folder Saeed. 
Let me go into the directory sahib. And I do ls and I clear this. And I create it. I'm going to create about five files in here. Touch. File 1. File 1. File 2. File 3. File 4. File 5. And I do ls. There are five files in here. Let me get out of this. And clear this. <coughs> so I'm going to use the mount command. Mount. That means, this is a new command I'm introducing. Mount means you're using the hard drive in it. You're telling the system to start using this hard drive. Mount slash dash slash sdb. And you have to push 1. Because that's the name of the partition. You know. Where is this coming from? LSD, okay. You see sdb. Okay. You could also do cat rock partition. And SD, SDB is here, and then SDB1 is the partition between SDB, SDB. So let me clear this. I'm going to do mount. Okay, so... We use the file system, we have to mount it, right? Yeah. You have to tell... You have to create, or you have to mount it to any folder. It could be an existing folder, but in this case, I'm creating a new folder. Yeah, I'll show you how you could mount it to the existing folder, okay? Mount dev slash sdb1. That's the official name of that drive and then the partition, okay? And then where am I going to put it on? That uh, slash the e. Okay, it did it too. BF has an H. And now you see here the disk SDB1. They all look alike, okay? You gotta be careful how they look. Uh, SDB. Okay, this is different than SDB1. And it's telling you 7.8 gigabytes. So as you can see, it's an 8 gigabyte disk. And one percent is being used. And it's mounted on. Is mounted on the drive so, uh, folder SAE. So if I go in here and go SAE, and if I do LS, what will happen? Uh, will I be able to see all the files in there or not? Any wise guess? I think yes. Anybody has any other uh, opinion? Okay, so no. What it is doing is now folder, folder which is, I told you long time ago, this is a file. So now what is using is, you're using the soft link here and pointing it towards, uh, the, I'm, I'm sorry, the system deep down, in the heart of a system, it created a soft link, and it's pointing towards this folder here. So now, the file that was in the folder Saeed is not there, because now that folder is pointing towards this hard drive here. So, this is this is system generated here. It says lost and found. If you do LSF&A, you will see these are the default, default folders in here, okay? I never went into lost and found. So what what happened to those files that we F1, F2, we five files that we created in the in that folder before we mount? Those those files are on the hard drive. Those files are those files are written into the C uh S D A. We have we have to unmount it to see those files again, okay? <coughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create about 1,000 files here. Touch, file,
I just created about 1000 files in here, okay? Does this happen? No. Let's hyphen L, WC hyphen L. What is this command going to do? LS hyphen L, and then I'm going to do a WC hyphen L. What is this going to do? Counted line. Exactly, very good. So it has about 102 files in there. <clears throat> so if you unmount it, that means that file, these files, we won't be able to see that one, but we will see the previous ones. Exactly, exactly. So what this is, is your file size is now just the window here. So right now we are using a folder size to view the files which are in the SDA1, SDB1. Okay, SDB, SDB and SDB1 are the, uh, SDB1 is now pointing towards Sahib. Okay, so now, now the command to re unmount is you mount, that's it. The command to remove the file system is you mount. Uh, one question uh, the, the, the here. I'm looking at the uh, two file system SD1 and SDB1. Yesterday when we having a class, you mentioned that it goes from SDA1 to SDA26 and then it goes to SDB. No. It goes to SDA1 and SDA all the way to Z, then afterwards it goes back to A again, A. -A. C, S, D, A, D, and it goes to Z here. It's only three digits. Now, so what, are, what are those numbers 1, 2, 1 at the end of S, D, A, 1, and S, D, B, 1? What are those? Partitions on the one drive. One single drive. We are using the entire size of the single drive here, right? Right. So, when you get a raw disk, it's nothing. It's just a blank raw disk. You've got nothing in it. So, for the system to be able to it's like a, it's a it's like a raw piece of land. You have a raw piece of land. It's open space. What we did is we just created a one big old box, one big old. We put a roof and then four walls, and we that means it's and then we use the entire space of that land to just create one big warehouse here. So it's just one partition. That means it's a half. Give this the name itself SDA1. I'll show you how to create more than one partition on the one physical hard drive, okay? Thank you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart. INIT6.
Okay, so the system has been restarted. So let me uh, go back in there. So if I do df with an edge, that is not mounted anymore because if you don't mount it, if you if you don't, there is one specific uh, configuration file we have to make an entry for it to remember next time to mount it by something. I'll show you in a minute. So let's go into CD side. And if I do ls, our original files are back in there, in that folder. So to mount the file system, the, I'm going to show it officially. The command to mount the file is mount the file system name and the folder where you mount it, okay? And then to unmount it, you mount. And then you don't really have to give the folder name here, okay? You just find out what you're unmounting. Okay, before that, let's do DFF and edge. So the file system is there, right? It's mounted here and it's mounted to say. Okay, you try new mount. And then if you do DFF and edge. Uh, do we have to, uh, like, uh, add this into X type? Okay. After mounting. Add where? Yes, tab. Yes, I'm coming there. Let's see. Okay, so you mount mount and unmount. You just use this command here. Uh -huh. Okay, so you could do touch so many files in there. And then um, right here. And you mount it. And then you created about 1,000 files in there. So this, this command line, what we do, uh, this type here, touch, file, and this is kind of script here, okay? We'll go, we'll go much deeper into script in, in a little while, okay? But not now. But just imagine if you want to create same files, about 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever, this is a single command you would use. Okay, and to unmount it, you could just use this. Okay, now, or you could just use this too. So let's see, uh, CD clear, DFF and edge. It's right now unmounted, right? So let's mount it. If you type DFF and edge, then it's showing you it's mounted there. You could unmount using let me see if you could use this here. I haven't really tried it use. Okay. So either either you could use this, either you could use this part or this part to unmount it, okay? But to mount it, you have to specify what are you mounting and where are you mounting. Okay, any questions? I'm going to, let's take five minutes break here, okay? I will come back and touch. Sure, okay. Thank you. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, so...
Okay. So what we're going to do is anytime, anytime the system is rebooting, if it's not put in, in the, one of the configuration files, what will happen is it will lose the settings when the system boots. One. Let, let me show you one other thing here. Okay, so so you you could take this SDB one and launch it anywhere you want. Okay, let's create MKBIR. MKDA is secure. So there is a folder named Shaquille here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mount slash dev slash sdb1 and then I'm going to mount it to Shaquille. If I do the MS and H, it says now it's mounted to Shaquille. So if I do CD slash Shaquille, and if I do LS, what, what am I going to see here? Lock, lock and found. And? Uh -huh. I'll give you a hint. I, I did mount here. The last time we mounted, I think we saw only lost and found. Uh, I just walked in on my time, just something, but not the, the, the one that you created before, you created, you have created some files first. Okay, you created some more files here, so that should be gone then. If you, if you created before you mounted, it should all be gone. It's all there. So what I'm trying to say is the files which are sitting on the physical drive is going to be there unless you delete them. If you don't delete them, it's going to be there. But I explained to you that the folder we are using to mount it, we are just using it as a view, as a window. We are using it as a view master. It is called mod, mod point, right? Mod point, yes. Folder. Photo is called mall point and the data is still on the SD the SDB one. So you could unmount it <laughs> if you want to give uh, you yeah, know I mean somebody trouble. You go to <laughs> you know, thank, thank you, brother. Uh, when you took a, you told me to take a five minute break, I went to the restroom and I came back when you were mounting. And so I might have missed something. The previous the uh, steps that you did were you created a folder with the name site, you created some files, then you mount it, and we were not able to see those files. Yeah, I created some uh, folder, I created a file name before I mounted yeah. the SDB went to site. Now I created, yes. I created a thousand files. Now that file on the, on the base, the base of the Saeed previously was on hard drive, uh, the regular hard drive. Okay. So the base of the Saeed is SDB1. So say this folder Saeed is just a viewing window. That's where it's going through. It's called mount point. Okay. I'm, not, I'm just trying to find the difference between the previous one and the this one. Why we were able to see the files here, but what did I miss here? Because the files are sitting here, SDB1. 
Okay, let's let's go ahead and clear. We do LS here, right? And then let me clear it. And then I'm gonna U mount Shaquille. Okay, so U mount slash Shaquille. Okay, I have to exit out of there. And I do LS. And so these are some uh, system generated files there. Okay, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Okay. But let's go ahead and create another uh, another folder here. So basically, I, I the basically I think you're trying to say that if you mounted your uh, drive to something and you did some work on that one, and if you mount it to somewhere else, those files will still be there. Yeah, Am I correct? Yeah. Okay, okay. So no, no, I got you fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. So let me uh, speed this up and uh, explain this to you. Okay, so the command is mount, and the mount is, what are you mounting, dash slash fdd1, and the mount point is slash three. Okay? Is this, is this going to help? Yeah, I'm great, brother. Uh, it might help, but I think I'll, I'll dodge your point, what you're trying to yeah. what you already explained. Okay. That helps. Okay, so now we are able to do this. So what happens if the system reboots? Uh, this is this is just in memory here. When the system reboots, it's not going to remember that what was mounted here. So there is a configuration file. There is a configuration file that you have to mount it. So you do. And then you do SSH. So to make to make to make the file to make uh, uh, mounting persistent persistence with reboot. That's how you, you officially call. Somebody will ask you in the interview, how do you make uh, a mount point persistent with the reboot? And you say you make the entry in the FS tab. So where is the FS tab here? So there is a file name called, it's the configuration file name. So all the configuration files are in etc folder. And then FS tab. So you have to VI, use the VI editor to use, change the settings into the FS tab. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this, and this is what it looks like here. So what are you going to do now is uh, copy this line here. Okay, Y Y, and you go all the way to the bottom. And then you open new line, 
and then you paste it here. Okay, I'm going to copy this line here. Okay, so what the general rule of thumb is copy, copy the existing one, and then make changes here. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the changes here then, slash, what was the one I had as db1. And where is this where is this mounted on? It's gonna mount it on a secure. And what is the file system? File system is ext4. Okay? And then just leave this leave this to default and one one the way it is. Don't touch this. I, I will we'll go deeper into this but I'm gonna show you uh, some troubleshooting here. Okay? So let me go ahead and save and exit. And if I do here have an edge, second is not mounted. Okay, so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the system mount it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the system, okay? And see what will happen. What is the command to restart the system? In your six. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it in your six. Yeah, but this is F tab, right? Yeah, tab, your uh, adding is F tab. Yeah, FS10. Thank you. Okay, now you see, now you see the file system SDB1 is now mounted to Shakili. Now if you could reboot thousand times, it's going to remember, it's going to remember that, that file system, you need to file the file system because it's reading that FS tab file when you need to. It's part of a boot process here. So where is, this, where is all that doing here? is uh, when it go up to the boot process. Uh, remount in the read file system starts the okay so it's a red hat it starts the system B processes here, okay? So when it does that it's gonna read all these files and then unmount it for you. So we 
we made this entry here, so I'm going to put it in yellow. Okay. So you copy, copy one of these lines here, and that way you know uh, that you're copying the other space and the spacing is all there. Okay, any questions? Okay, but you see here that there is something called UUID in here, right? So what we're going to do is we use the name here to mount it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the UUID to do it, okay? Every partition has a different UUID? Yes. Very good. So, how are you going to see the UUID? Mount using UUID, okay. Okay, what is a UUID? Every device has a UUID, okay? It's just not the hard drive itself. Every device has its own UUID. So UUID is universal uh, UUID, universal uh, identifier. Okay, universal unique identifier, that's what it stands for. Okay. Okay, so how are we going to find out the UUID for the device? You type BL, BLKID, block ID. Okay, the command is BLKID, and then let me clear this BL. Uh, BLKID. Okay. So what will happen is it will give you the on the output it will give you the UUID. Is UUID is universal unique identifier. So it could be a it's a 128 bit number. So it's pretty strong. Okay, so the, you will find the new UUIDs for all this here. So we are looking at SDB1, and this is the UUID. Look at this. This is an alphanumeric number here. It could be only one ID in the entire world. It will keep changing. If you delete an ID, it will create a new UUID. It cannot be more. It cannot be mapped anywhere else. And what I mean is. It's unique to this uh, device here, okay? So let's take a look. So I'm going to U-mount. Okay. So how am I going to mount this here? Mm. 
Brother Zafar, a quick question, please. Yeah. Why, why uh, yes, we can do this uh, using this UUID number, but why we need to grab this? Otherwise, we know the other procedure that you just taught us how to mount the dial. What is what's the advantage of doing this? Or what's the difference between this and the other way? There are a couple things here. When you are mounting with the UUID, you could never go wrong here. First thing is like if you're doing using an LTP one, you know you could see how closely all this looks alike. SDA one and SDB one, you could definitely make some uh, mistakes here. UUID, you, you, there will never be a mistake that which drive you'll be using. And sometimes there are application written that use the UUID information. So I, in my in my in my environment is at the job I see both environments. Is. Sometimes they're using the UID, sometimes they're using the uh, this information here, mount information here. Good afternoon, my friend. So, so usually you put this into the FS tab here. So what you gonna do is vi slash etc slash fs tab. Let me see here if you can mount this. And then I'm gonna use the UUID. Okay, it, we just we just mounted it using the UUID. Okay. Okay. So that's the command using the mount UUID here. What you could do is make an entry make an entry into into FS tab. So how you how you gonna do it? Pretty simple here. I mean let's do Let's copy this information here. Okay, you come down here and then you What was the UUID? Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to delete this. Okay. 
Okay. This is how it looks here. So if you if you could look up here and we are exactly following the same format here, okay? I'm going to save and exit, and then I'm going to restart the file. Uh, just question, Brother Zafar. Yeah. On the previous file that you had opened, uh, FSTAR file, under the UUID, they have a 1 and 2. Does that matter instead of 1, 1? No, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm saving that for one later. I'll, I'll explain you what it is. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to exit and then I'm going to init six and then hopefully what will happen is it will mount it using the UUID here. All this is valid on uh, Red Hat 7 also, so you guys have to try that on Red Hat 7, I'm not going to show that to you. So far Red Hat 6 and 7, it's the same procedure. Okay, so now it's a, it's a, since we have this in access tab, it's still doing the loading it and then it's doing the job, it's getting the job done here, okay. Okay, so let me hear this, I can B L K I D. Okay, so Okay, give me one second here.
Okay, what time is it? Uh, we still have 20 minutes here. Give me one moment, I need, I need to put this on pause. So, Paul, can you guys hear me, right? Yes, sir, I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, good. Okay. So let me go in the system again, restart. Oh, I didn't start it yet. Yeah, I need to start that. Okay, guys, next, next three weeks is going to be really, really important. I'm going to cover actually this week and then another three weeks is going to be really important. I'm going to cover logical volume. And uh, if you miss the class here, then it's going to be really, really difficult for you guys to make up all that. Okay. Okay, so I forgot one command here. You could name, you could also name the, you could also name, give it a name to the disk here. Instead of giving the, keeping it like dev slash sd, d1, you could give it a name also. So let's run this command here first and see if it's going to work. So we're going to use E2, E2 label, slash dev, slash sdb, sdb1, and I'm going to name it ZMPT, uh, underscore data. Okay, and then it will be BLKID. Okay, here, 
Remember when we did UUID, there was there was nothing, there was not information available for the label here. Now that we added a label here, right? So what we should do is now we're going to mount it using the label. Mount using the UUID and uh, once the system. Okay, now what we're going to do is mount using the label. It's a minor start of the race of one, not one. Mm -hmm. So once the system instead of one, the system. It's just a typo. Yeah, thank you. And by the way, system does, they do, you just can't be changing anything and rebooting. You have to follow the, your company procedure here. If it's a production box, a system which is making money to the, to the company, you just can't go there and then restart the system. I think I've told you guys early on. You have to get a change request and a couple, 10, 20 people will be watching it, what you're doing, it, and they will approve it. If somebody says they can't approve it, that means that's a roadblock. So then you have to start all over again. Okay. So what you got to do is, Run the command. Run the command E2 label. ZM, uh, so we are giving the name here. Okay. Now mount it. Mount it using the name. So we do df hyphen h, and it's there, right? I'm going to u mount secure. So now I'm going to do mount hyphen l, capital L, and then I'm going to give it a, a mount name, zmpt underscore data. And then I'm going to mount it to the E. Okay, it is a D of an H. And we have successfully mounted using the label, using the name. Okay. Okay, so you can do V I E T C FS tab and then what you could do is you could go in here. Okay, if I do if I put a comment side here, a side if I do a comment here, that means this line is, this line won't be read by the system. So this line is blinded out. Okay? So a good practice is to put a comment in there. Don't delete the line. 
If you're making changes, just make, put a comment there. And then what you could do is you could delete this. You could delete that information and make an entry in it. Okay, so how are you going to do that? You're going to say label. <coughs> L A B E L. You have to give it a capital letters, and then you have to put in quote Z M P T Z M P T underscore data. Close the quote, and then you're putting on secure, and then the file system is E X T four D four one and one. Okay. So you do T F F and H, and then you do mount u mount slash the e okay and then if you do you have an edge it's unmounted so let's go ahead and restart it i'm going to go ahead and restart it Okay, so let's see if the system is there. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is where I don't want to come. So why did it fail here? Because I gave the name wrong here. Don't don't worry about this what you're seeing here. Um
Okay, don't worry about it, what I just did here, <clears throat> well, I'll show that, that's another topic here, I'll show that a little later. So the only thing we need to worry about is, because the entry was not made correct, what it is, the system panicked and then it went into the troubleshooting mode.
if I do F have an F now, it should work here. So we have successfully mounted using the label, using the UUID, using the device name. Okay? And then uh, we'll continue more uh, next week. Okay? Please don't miss any class starting next week because I'm going to go deeper and deeper into the logical volume manager. And uh, there is a lot of other stuff I need to show you. Next three weeks is very critical. Uh, okay. That is a question. Do you think that yeah. we can have this uh, file by today or tomorrow so that uh, I didn't do hands-on practice while you are doing it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah. Because I'm, uh, you know, in Chicago, I'm doing it on a laptop. So that's why, yeah, it's getting a little bit. I'll do it for yesterday and today. I'll do it today. Okay. Love.